Hello um, and good evening and uh, welcome to the Electronic Medicines Book uh, webinar. Uh, my name is Martin Smith. I'm the AHDB Senior Veterinary Senior Manager. Um, I'm joined here this evening by uh, Jenny Newman and Elena Arnold, who are um, here to help with the sort of technical support side of things. Um, Jenny will be going through the uh, the live version of EMB a little bit later. Um, I just like to say that this uh, this webinar is going to be uh, approximately an hour in total, with around half an hour of the presentation and half an hour left for for questions afterwards. Um, you can ask questions at any point during this webinar. Uh, there is a little tab on the right hand side uh, of your screen which you can put in uh, your questions into the chat box. We will come back to those questions. Uh, later on when we get to that section, but you can ask uh, at any point during the discussion, during the webinar. So um, I'm just going to go through uh, a quick overview of what we're covering uh, this evening. Uh, first of all, we're going to go through why the EMB pigs was developed. Uh, we're also going to go through what is EMB pigs. And then we'll have a real-time overview of the EMB system. So to go through why EMB pigs was developed. So uh, the UK government has, uh, is one of the drivers for the development of EMB pigs. We've got a series of different drivers. And um, certainly our own government is the internal driver. Uh, they have, for a number of years, uh, had a, a five-year reduction strategy in terms of antimicrobial usage, which we're currently coming to the end of one strategy and a new one due to start. Um, and one of the reasons why the government have been uh, concerned around antibiotic use is the development of antimicrobial resistance uh, in humans, um, but also uh, looking at the animal impact of that. Um, and seeing as uh, around three quarters of the antibiotics uh, globally are used in agriculture, um, that has uh, obviously caused some concern. Um, whilst there is uh, very little evidence to suggest um, that uh, there is much of a risk from transmission from, from animals to, to humans, um, it's, it's still a concern and we, we have to address that. Um, more recently, there has been a, a report called the O'Neill Report, which has really sort of set out the One Health picture. And, and out of that, uh, there has uh, been a series of targets that are uh, expected that the different sectors in, in, of uh, livestock will have to meet, um, and they will be set in place in 2018. And uh, there will be some species-specific targets, which will start in 2018 and go on for a uh, following 10 years. So uh, there's, there's quite a lot of uh, pressure, certainly from the political side. Um, and then there are uh, other um, wider issues that are at a higher level. So we actually do see um, some of the, uh, the pressure being driven at, um, at a more global state. So the UN, uh, G8, uh, NATO, and the food, uh, FAO, uh, as well as the EU, who have uh, some proposed legislation which will require reporting of antimicrobial usage on farm by species. And that's something that is, is probably likely to, to come along in the next few years. Um, now, that picture probably has been changed a little bit by uh, Brexit. And it's not very clear at the moment as to exactly what those terms are going to be. However, um, even if we don't focus on an EU market, and whether it's a hard or a soft Brexit, uh, the likelihood is that global trade is something that we will be looking for. And our good stewardship of antimicrobial usage will be a, a strong um, package and a strong message to be sending out um, for foreign trade. So there's a, there's a reason to, for us to, to be quite um, responsible in terms of our recording of antimicrobial usage. 
The other angle to this is also the media attention, and uh, it, it's fairly noticeable that uh, barely a week goes by where there isn't a story in one of the mainstream press around uh, antimicrobial superbugs and antimicrobial resistance, um, and there are a fair number of them about at the moment. And I think this will be set to continue. So that was just a, a quick whistle-stop tour, really, of why the system has been developed. It's been developed, really, to address these, these concerns and to meet these needs. Um, and we're, we're agreed, really, that the, the, the pig sector needs to, to account for the antibiotic use that it has and also to put farmers in a position where they can demonstrate that their antibiotics are being used responsibly and that they're using uh, whatever alternatives uh, they can wherever possible. Uh, the EMB was really created to satisfy the needs of industry and it's an electronic version of the existing medicines book um, and is a convenient way to record and to quantify antimicrobial usage. Um, you, you will probably be aware that it's a legal obligation for farmers to keep a medicines book, and if uh, companies so wish to do so, they can use this system as a full replacement. However, um, for large-scale producers, it may be more uh, worthwhile using it uh, in terms of uh, total aggregated returns, which meets the requirements uh, for the Red Tractor standards. In addition, Red Tractor are looking to um, potentially move on to the requirement for quarterly standards and making it a requirement to submit to the EMB um, on the quarter uh, with their on, with on-farm usage data. And this will be starting at some point next year, uh, probably from January. So uh, this is really in advance of that and uh, a way of demonstrating the system that we are uh, we will be probably uh, made to use. So this system is free to use. It's available to all UK pig producers. Um, if you're in England and Wales, you can use your existing pig hub logon. Or if you're in Scotland and Northern Ireland, you need to register with uh, pig hub, uh, and then it will allow you access. Uh, you have a choice of how you upload the information. Uh, you can either upload the information yourself or you can delegate responsibility to an agent who can act on your behalf and that could be either a vet or a consultant. Uh, there are different ways in which data can be uploaded as well, uh, either through the web portal or via spreadsheets. The spreadsheets are a, a, a useful alternative if you have poor internet access because they can be downloaded and information can be added onto the computer um, in, uh, in real time and then uploaded onto the EMB later on. We do have some future developments in the pipeline which will further increase the usability of the system and this will probably allow uh, the farm management systems to talk directly to the EMB um, and mobile apps is another area in which we've got some developments in the pipeline too, so look out for those. So how will the EMB system help us here? Well, when producers um, have adopted the EMB, so when, when uh, data is put on there, we'll be able to adopt um, and determine how much antibiotic medicine use the pig industry is using. Uh, once we have that data, then we're able to set realistic targets for, for reduction. So this will satisfy the requirements of the O'Neill report. And um, the reason I've used the term realistic is because currently we are unable to provide an actual uh, usage figure um, for, uh, for the pig industry specifically, and uh, there is the potential that we're going to have legislative restrictions imposed upon us if we don't have something uh, to put in place. Um, there is also an additional benefit which is uh, generally not uh, stated, which is uh, really just to do with uh, the process of recording medicines usage on farm, um, which is actually to, to determine how much is being used and also when um, use is, is, is peaking 
and uh, if there are certain reasons for that, so whether there needs to be management change or whether there is uh, um, uh, any other actions or reasons why uh, levels are going up or going down. And certainly with the farms that we've seen that have used this system, they have been able to uh, save money in some cases uh, by, um, by using less medicines by changing management practices and certainly having a log over time to do that. So I will shortly hand over to um, Jenny Newman to offer as a practical demonstration of the system. Uh, you'll see a box at the right hand side of your screen as I mentioned earlier where you can type questions. Please ask as many questions as you wish. We will attempt to get through them all, but um, if we're unable to get to your particular question, we can then follow up directly afterwards on the website with a Q&A. So we're just going to make a start now. Welcome to this quick guide to entering your antibiotic usage data into the electronic medicine book on EMB. The video runs for less than five minutes and will take you through the simple steps for submitting an antibiotic return. Before you start, you'll need details of all of your antibiotic usage, whether injectable, in water or in feed. It's important to note that if you're looking to enter your in-feed data, you will need to extract the quantity of antibiotic product in the feed. More on this in the next video. You'll also need to know the number of pigs that left your unit during the time period covered and how many sows and boars were present at the end of the period. So, if you have all of these things in place, we're ready to start. You can find a link to EMB by clicking the producer icon, corporate or agent icons. You can set up an agent if you want someone else to enter your data for you, for example your vet. But in this example, we will use the producer icon. You can find the eMedicine book link on the bottom right hand corner of this page. Selecting the EMB link takes you to the EMB website and logs you in using your PigHub login details. If this is your first visit, you'll be asked to agree to the T's and C's, otherwise you'll just need to select continue. All of the holdings you can access are listed here. In this example, all the holdings are test sites. If this is your first visit, check that all of the holdings you expect to see are listed. You can see what level of access you have for a given holding. It will either be view only or view and enter. You cannot enter data if you have view only access. Contact HDB Pork if changes are needed. If this is your first visit, the date last entered box will be coloured pink for all of your holdings, signifying that no data has yet been entered. In this example, we will enter data for Perky Pink Pigs 3. This page is the dashboard for the chosen holding. It displays the unit details, providing the opportunity to check that you're entering data against the correct unit. In the bottom right hand corner of the screen, there is a link to an FAQ and the PIG contact form in Help and Support. Select clicked here to start entering data. You can choose any of the three methods listed here. In this example, we'll be using the simple antibiotic data entry. A pop-up window asks you to confirm. And a further window pops up to ask for the current time period in which the data is to be entered. It defaults to the current three month period. It's important to note that if you select the default, you will not be able to enter data from previous periods. For data that precedes the current period, you will need to select a custom period. I'm going to choose the whole of 2015, choosing custom period entering 2015, a duration of 12 months and clicking on select time period will take me to the next page. All antibiotic treatments must be entered regardless of the route of administration. Select add total amount of antibiotic used. In the pop-up window, you can choose to enter the antibiotic or the feed in stock. Feed must have been added to stock and this will be dealt with by a separate video. Alternatively, you can choose to enter the total quantity of antibiotic product contained in the feed. Choose the antibiotic product from the drop down list. We will choose Amoxifal 500 mg per gram oral powder. For age group, if you don't have this information, choose the age group in the drop down list which best matches your average age group for the holding. In this example, we'll select finishers. From the total quantity used drop-down box, choose the appropriate unit of measure, in this case grams. 
enter the total units used, in this case 100 grams. Choose the primary reason for treatment from the drop down box. If you don't have this information, choose ill. However, in this case, we will select coughing and select save. All antibiotics used should be entered in the same way. Note that you can delete the draft submission at any point up to submission. Once you are happy that all the data has been accurately entered, select Submit Antibiotic Return from the top right hand side of the screen. In the pop up window, select the holding type that best suits your holding, in our case, finishers. Enter the number of sows and boars present, because this is a finishing farm, we're going to enter zero. Enter the number of slaughter pigs that have left the holding, in this case, 100. Enter the number of weaners that have been moved off the holding, in this case, zero. Select Submit Return and you should receive a confirmation message. Also, graphs showing antibiotic usage trends are displayed below. More detail can be found by selecting Holding Antibiotic Usage Report on the right hand side of the page. If you wish to unsubmit your return, you can do so within 24 hours. To do this, select Submission History. Then select the entry you want to unsubmit and choose Undo Submission from the right hand side. Select Edit from the pop-up window. You can then delete the draft submission if you wish. After the 24 hour period, you will need to contact HDB Pork to unsubmit for you. Thank you for listening. Okay. Um, so one of the questions uh, is that um, how do we put the uh, in-feed medication uh, into the system? Um, so there are there are two ways really in which in feed can be uh, put onto the system. I mean, in feed does make up a, a, a about um, high 80s, 89 to 90 percent of, uh, of of antibiotics used. Um, so the the best way of doing that, you can either use the um, the in feed ingredients. So if you know how much of the uh, premix has been added and fed to the pigs, you can put that in as a, as a separate line in your aggregated return. Or the easier system is there's, a, there's my feed stock, which you will see um, on the right hand side menu. And if you put, uh, if you click on the my feed stock section, um, you can actually fill that out and it will do all the calculations for inclusion rates for you. Um, there is a, um, a video that is, uh, which we will circulate a link to the video uh, which has been created to explain this in more detail so you'll have visuals to, to show you how to use that. But, but that's one of the ways in which we can, we can uh, add feed to the system. So I've got a question to say, is it mandatory to submit uh, an antibiotic usage report. So uh, I'm, su uh, I'm assuming that is it mandatory to uh, submit your uh, data um, on the quarter or annually. Um, currently, there, the stipulation by Red Tractor is that there is an annual aggregated return, and this will fulfil those requirements. Um, in in terms of uh, going forward, it's being um, incorporated, it's going out for consultation, but it looks like it's going to be incorporated into the Red Tractor standards, so it will soon be a requirement, but as it stands at the moment, it is voluntary whether you do it or you don't. One of the reasons why I would encourage people to, to use the system and to put their data up onto the system is that at the moment, we need to have some sort of idea as to how much antibiotics we are using within the pig sector because there will be targets written in the spring of next year uh, which will follow over 10 years for reduction. They'll be in place from 2018. And if we are uh, unable to have some sort of idea as to how much antibiotics we're using in the pig sector, uh, we are going to be in a much weaker position for setting realistic targets. So that's one of my pleas, really, is, um, you know, you, you, you might be uh, concerned about the added paperwork, but actually this is really going to help the industry if you, if you do put the data on here. So 
So somebody has asked, uh, should we do nil returns when we don't use any antibiotics? Uh, yes, that's exactly uh, how the system works. Uh, so um, if you have a, a quarter where you haven't used any antibiotics, you can submit a blank, um, uh, a blank sheet for that month. It will still ask you how many pigs have moved off the holding or how many breeding pigs you've got on the holding, um, and then it will basically calculate it as a nil return. What you will see is you will see uh, a space on the graph, so you won't see any data for that because obviously you haven't used any antibiotics. And there's a little explanatory uh, message that comes that when you hover over it will come up to say why there isn't a um, a, a piece on the graph, but, um, but what that will do is it will just calculate how many um, how many stock you've got on on the holding, and it will um, add to that average annual aggregated data. So the the total amount will be taking into account how many pigs you've got moving on and off the holding. Um, does anyone else have any questions? Okay, well, thank you very much for everyone's time. Um, we haven't got any more questions uh, at the moment. Um, any questions that have come in late, we will address on the Q&A uh, a little bit later. Um, but I hope this has been some use. If you need to have any more information, then uh, please uh, do feel free to contact one of your regional KE staff. Um, the KE team um, are briefed on this, so they'll be able to give you some help, and certainly if you need some help inputting data, they should be able to help you with that as well. Um, there will be an EMB PIGS user guide, which will be available soon through uh, AHDB PORC. Um, and um, then there are also the videos that I've mentioned available on the website. Um, and as this is a recording of the webinar, we will put this up and make this available as well. Um, if you need to contact us, you have any technical issues with it, please use the PigHub email address, which is pighub at ahdb.org.uk. That again is pighub at ahdb.org.uk. Um, so thank you very much for your time, and I wish you all a pleasant night.